or half in the future and half in the past. Don't get confused now. I know, I'm gonna get confused. It's gonna mess with my head. I'm not gonna figure this out. Welcome to Thanks for Writing. Thanks for not writing still, actually. Uh, we are going to talk today. We have an interesting topic, I think. We were uh, something that just came up between us in a conversation in between recording last time, I think. We were just thinking about, uh, it, it's sort of a multi-part question, or I guess it's one question and then more grew out of it, but... Uh, it all started with uh, with thinking about rides that we wish we could have ridden. Uh, this would be rides that are no longer in existence. So uh, anything that uh, I guess anything that's existed since the beginning of, of of rides that we never got a chance to ride personally, either one of us, and that we wish we we could. I guess it's that quintessential time machine sort of question. It's I think that's fun, and then. Uh, from there, we're going to discuss a little bit. Um, we were thinking about uh, rides that we actually made the effort and and made the long journey, uh, in some cases, to get there and to, and to be there, and then we just couldn't ride the fucking thing. In almost every case, it's you know, because it wasn't running. And then also uh, out of this, we also were thinking about uh, a couple of instances where we. We're at a park at a point in time, and a certain ride may have still existed and been open, and for for whatever reason, we just didn't do it. And and now that ride is no longer open; it is now defunct. So it's too late to go back and correct it. Uh, so you know, just rides we could have ridden but didn't. Uh, and as as per usual, we have not compared notes ahead of time. We we'll get our real reactions here. And I just want to say, I am really juiced for this one. I'm pumped <laughs> because it's cool because we, most of these rides we haven't talked about before. And when are we ever going to? So this is a great opportunity. Um, yes, that is a great point. I see that a lot scrolling through my list here. All right. So I think let's start at the beginning uh, with the question that uh, started this off in our heads, uh, which is... Uh, what are some rides that we wish we could have ridden that are no longer in existence? Well, do you, do you want me to start? Do you want to start with the ride that kicked off this whole idea? Okay. I don't know what that is now. Well, it was uh, Steel Phantom at Kennywood. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Now I remember. Okay. Yeah, because <laughs> I never got to it. I, I think I got to Kennywood the year after it went out. A year or two after, I, somewhere in there, it was, it was very soon after. I just missed it. And, I think it was the next year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, huge Arrow uh, Mega Looper at Kennywood, where the second drop is like over two hundred feet, drops down into a uh, into a ravine, and a couple of inversions, and it just looked awesome. And ah, uh, I'm sad that I didn't get to that one in time. But I know you did, right, B? I did, yes. I wrote it in its final season. Uh, so I just got it, and very glad that I did. That was a special ride. It was uh, very different than any other Arrow Mega Looper in that it had that that sort of airtime machine beginning and then goes into the inversions later. Uh, I guess the closest thing to it is, is well, now was Vortex at Kings Island. Uh, which also has a little you know, bit of an airtime machine beginning, but not quite as much. Really, just the one drop, and then kind of a swooping turnaround, and and then you kind of drop into the loops after right after that on Vortex. Whereas uh, you know Phantom, it got you with the first uh, curve drop, and then that famous or infamous, uh, still mostly exists, uh, even a few feet I think longer now in its form, uh, current form, but. Uh, 
that second drop. Every time they talked about it on TV, it was always, but it's the fact that the second drop is the largest. <laughs> yeah. you know, they, they, they come up with different ways to phrase it in every, every hour special they would do, but it's always, you know, but yeah, it's the second drop. That's actually the largest, which I guess was cool. It just, it just, just worked out that way with the, with the terrain that they had. And, uh, but yeah, that was great. Um, only other thing about that, uh, and I know I mentioned it in our conversation, how odd it is that Kennywood was so far ahead of the curve with eliminating their Arrow ride. That was way back in 2000. After the 2000 season, they tore that shit out. So interesting that they got out early on that trend. Yeah, it's cr- it's kind of crazy because... Arrow was still a company. They like, they still existed at that point. Yeah, they hadn't even gone under yet. Like there wasn't there wasn't as good of a reason to to get rid of that at that time as there would be just like five years later. Did they ever even ask Arrow to modify it? Not you know, it's either. weird they went to Morgan. You know, when Arrow still existed in some form. So it's just really weird. And then even more odd that uh, Kennywood has the weird connection now that they're coming kind of full circle and uh, have a, a legacy of Arrow major mega looper that they just put in. Yeah, with Steel Curtain? Yeah, that is very strange. It's cool, but it's strange. Yeah, they, 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 one of the, the first prominent Arrow mega loopers to go down and then in, within their park limits, and then also now they're a park that's brought the closest thing you can get now to Arrow back into their park when other parks are not doing that right now. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, the connection there. Uh, so yeah, all right. Interesting. The first one, uh, only half of us share. Yeah, uh, I actually got to ride that. Yeah, and and um, uh, you will see Arrow a bunch on at least my list. I mean, come on, wouldn't be the show if we didn't have Arrow. <laughs> That's right. All right, but that, uh, we'll get there. I'm gonna for my first one. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go way back. Step into the way back machine here. <laughs> okay. And this because this was first on my list. This first thing that came to mind: Crystal Beach Cyclone. Oh, I got that too. That's more than a curiosity. That's like, if time travel existed, that's like a must do for me. I just have to know what that's about. Mm-hmm. I, I could see myself only doing it once if it really is as insane as the legends now at this point are, uh, go. And, you know, of course, back row, wheel seat, it has to happen. <laughs> I mean, right? Because if you're going to do it, you got to go all the way with it. You know, and maybe I break a rib or whatever, but... I don't know. I have to try it. Yeah, it, it's just it's so famous in like roller coaster and theme park lore that this is like the ultimate bad guy ride of all time. <laughs> it's worse than the villain, the ride that was called villain. Yeah, where it's like if you went on this thing, then yeah, you were gonna like break a bone or split your head open or something really terrible was gonna happen. It's actually better than famous. It's infamous. Oh, infamous. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's like better than famous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this ride, this was from 1926 to 1946. So this was pretty old. And this was actually in Canada. Which is weird because, yeah, Canadians are known for being really nice and gentle. Yeah, Ontario, Canada. But they had this one of, if not the most infamous roller coaster ever built. If you guys out there haven't uh, looked up pictures of it, Go ahead. It it does just look crazy. The angles on it are impossible. It, yeah, that part off the lift, the first drop, and then you swoop back up again, and you end up almost where you started. It's like a total yeah. loop almost. <laughs> yeah. oh, God. It's essentially like what GCI has become known for uh, since they started with Wildcat at Hershey Park, but like not done properly. <laughs> at, least, at least just to, to the naked eye – to the old footage that exists it just it looks like it was not designed right and it just could not be uh, all that comfortable it's got to be a rough really nasty ride yeah uh, the, the engineering is questionable at best i'm sure yeah and 26 that's interesting that's uh one year before cyclone one year before the coney island cyclone yeah still had a 20 year run which is not bad yeah for something that was supposed to be so dangerous and terrible <laughs> yeah so yeah, I, Crystal Beach Cyclone. There's a there's a bit of lineage that that ride shares that that's it's sort of an ancestor to the uh, Comet at the Great Escape in uh, upstate New York. I guess I mean and now it's been so many years. At this point, maybe there's one board of wood 
<laughs> on that that actually was on the Crystal Beach Cyclone, if even maybe one nail or something. I don't know. But at the time in Canada, at that original park that it was at in Ontario, what was the name of the park? Did you say it? Uh, it wasn't Crystal Beach? Yeah, Crystal Beach Park. So at, at Crystal Beach, when they did close the Cyclone, they uh, deconstructed most of it and turned it into the uh, the Comet. Great Escape bought that coaster from uh, Crystal Beach when it was closed and then trucked it over to uh, to New York. And, you know, you brought up Coney Island, so then I might as well go there because I think it would be really interesting to see what, like, old Coney was like in, like, the 30s and 40s when it was just really insane. Like, you know, the, uh-huh. the old fun houses where you had... Like that wheel where everybody starts in the middle and then it spins and it kind of sp- it throws everybody out, or <laughs> or even like those there's like s- these like circular discs on the floor and you just like lay on the floor and you get like jostled around from and, and spun around from disc to disc and it's just like really weird shit like that. No, the human pool table. Yeah. And and, and it's like it, I mean of course to, to look at it today, it seems totally crazy because I'm sure there must have been so many injuries. And, but, you know, you can get away with so much crap back then without any protection or with, you know, no or very few laws in place. It it seemed like a really wild time. Yeah, I mean, it was just like playgrounds for adults. I guess adults and kids alike, although in the videos it always seems like it's mostly adults. Yeah. The footage. It's just like, it's like playgrounds, but but with motorized stuff involved. Um, Yeah, there was a lot of weird shit like that where like it's almost like you were the ride or you just kind (laughs) of well it was like even the moving walkways that would jostle up and down or back and forth they were just so exaggerated and and would go and would swing so far back and forth it just i don't know it 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 was amazing what they uh uh, how far they pushed it back then (laughs) from the very uh beginning yeah they just kind of went for it yeah i know all all that fun house stuff looked like it was amped up yeah, and again, like, you know, most of the stuff we're going to mention, you can look up footage of this online somewhere. Uh, and, and I do encourage you all to, to go take a look because you can, you know, virtually experience uh, a, a lot of the stuff that we're going to bring up. All right, well, we're doing Coney, the uh, the famous Coney Island parachutes. Oh, that, okay. That's like a must-do, right? Sure, yeah, I, I didn't think of that one, but yeah. We've gotten a chance to do the cyclone and uh, each of us actually got a chance to do it when it was even closer to original form before GCI got to it, um, which is cool. We've done the Wonder Wheel, another classic historic ride on Coney Island. But those parachutes, those are long gone uh, since I've been riding rides. So uh, I would uh, love to see what that was all about. Uh, I've done the ones at Great Adventure. I can't, you can't really call it modern anymore. It, the, the the sort of, you know, modern, uh, early modern era of theme parks uh, version from Intamin. But I'd love to find out what the original Coney Island installation was like. And I don't even know what the restraints were, if anything, really. It may have just been a bar that was like a foot or more away from you. I think it'd be really freaky. Freaky but fun, because you know, I should say that tower, the, the, the tower still exists to this day. Yeah, you can go see that tower. It, it's kind of a weird thing to be a landmark just because it's, it's not being used for what it's supposed to be used for, but okay, it's a New York City designated landmark, and it's also listed on the National Register of of Historic Places. So that thing's gonna be there until it blows down. So yeah, so that was about 1942. There's a little debate on the closure. 1964 to 1968, somewhere in there, it closed. Oh, interesting. Okay, but the tower's still there. You can still visit it. I know they did, like, I mean, it's about a decade ago now, I think, but they did do a renovation on it. Anything else on that? No, I don't think so. I think I'm good with the parachutes. Um, I'm going to say Shockwave at Six Flags Great America. Oh, you beat me to it. <laughs> so another Arrow Mega Looper tore out in 2002, I want to say. Yeah, it was 1988 to 2002. Uh, it was the first in that series. There was Shockwave at Six Flags Great America. There was Great American Scream Machine at Six Flags Great Adventure. And Viper at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Viper is the only one left standing. Uh, and Viper's a, a little, definitely a little different. They, they sort of, uh, 
it's the same elements in the same order, but they made it more compact. They had to change some of the uh, the turns in it to kind of get into a, a more compact footprint. Folded it in on itself for that one. Yeah, but Shockwave was was very very similar, if not identical, to Great American Screen Machine at Great Adventure, which we know very well. I mean, that's long gone now, but we do know that very well. It's just it's just a shame that we didn't get to it in time. Absolutely, same for me. Yeah. It was blue, for one thing. <laughs> it was blue. <laughs> I feel like they just did a lot of red track, a lot of gray, black. Oh, I never really thought about that. So that was blue, a nice bright electric blue. I thought it was kind of – it always looked great in pictures. That's a damn shame. A lot of similarities with, with Scream Machine. It was like a parking lot coaster too, just the same way. Yes. Um, like Great Adventure uh, situated the Scream Machine. They, they kind of did the same thing in Great America, put it out, out front in the parking lot. With just like gravel beneath it, kind of bare bones looking, and and the real cool thing about that was, uh, and I really hate that I missed this. There was a time when you had uh, you had Shockwave and you had Demon uh, in the same park at oh, the same time. Yeah. So kind of redundant actually, but uh, I'm really glad. I don't know why they didn't get rid of Demon at any point when Shockwave existed but i'm really glad they didn't because now they still have that a lot of duplication there just an odd choice to put that ride in at all yeah and and that's one where we didn't just miss it we we kind of we got to that park a bunch of years after they took it out you know i guess that's the second one uh right after steel phantom that uh again it still wasn't really the trend yet but great america decided to get rid of that if i had a guess i'd say it's because of the, of the redundancy you know, management changed, and they were just kind of looking at it, and why do we have so many arrow loopers around here? <laughs> and they had four cork, four arrow corkscrews and five arrow loops in the same park. It's like, listen, guys, one of you's got to go. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but it's, yeah, it's just a lot of the same elements. And, of course, we got – it was replaced with Superman Ultimate Flight, the B&M off-the-shelf flyer. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I should mention, at Coney Island, it was called Parachute Jump, since I didn't really have a name for it. I just kept saying Coney Island Parachutes. Officially, it was it was Parachute Jump. Okay. All right. This will be the segue. We're talking Great America. One of the rides I have on here is Sky World, which existed at both original Marriott's Great America parks. What is that? It is the triple Intamin wheel. Okay, okay, I see. Damn, I'd really like to ride that. I, I'd love to just see it, actually. <laughs> I mean, even if I didn't ride it, I kind of feel like watching it would be more interesting than riding it. And, I, and I'm basing this off of the fact that I have, and actually both of us have, ridden the double version uh, that existed for many years at Hershey Park. No, you are incorrect. I never did it. You didn't do it. No. Really? That is Why on. Not? That's on my list of could have but didn't. <laughs> oh, we're spoiling the next section. Well, okay, but I all right. Well, where I was going with that is me. I have done that ride many times, but I also had a longer. I started going to Hershey Park a lot earlier than you did, uh, and based on that experience, again, I kind of feel. I mean, it was it was neat, but it, it wasn't the greatest thing it's still just a modified ferris wheel so you know i don't know how much the ride would be awesome of sky world but i know i'd love to just see it in action i feel that would just be uh just a sight to behold uh, a triple version of that i mean just the giant wheel the double version at hershey was just it was just it was giant true to its name and it was just a, a sight to behold in its own right so a third uh, adding a third wheel to it and then watching them switch between them and everything with two loading and and and, and one up at all times or was there two up and one loading whatever the fuck it was it just <laughs> i don't know i don't even know how it worked exactly but it just it just fascinates me uh, i i love to have experienced that ride it's kind of a freaky looking ride with like these like long spider finger <laughs> with like the well, cars at the yeah, end of it. It's just, it looks like something out of Tim Burton's head or something. It, it is weird, yeah. The other, the double version looks like it makes sense. 
with two Ferris wheels on either end of a boom. Whereas, yeah, you, then you add the third one in, and I don't know, the whole thing goes wacky. And it's almost like, like fantasy. It almost looks like something that should never have existed, that it would have been something that was invented for a movie, you know, but it wasn't a real thing. It, it kind of has that look to it. But, yeah. And, and that, that's a fun note on this one. Uh, this, this ride appeared, at least the one in uh, the California one, features prominently in Beverly Hills Cop 3. And I, and I believe, if I remember seeing, I think it was like an HBO behind the behind the scenes little featurette uh, from that movie way back when in the 90s. Like it was one of those things where like the director or the stunt coordinator, like someone saw it and just they, like, we got to do something with this ride. <laughs> they just thought like it just looked freaky and crazy and like out of someone's imagination. And they kind of couldn't believe that it was real and it was actually there in the park that they were going to film in. And they were just kind of like, we got to design a scene around this ride, I think. It's just, it's just screaming out for it. And they did. They created a whole silly sequence around it. And in that movie, I believe it is called The Spider or The Something Spider. or something. I think Spider is in the name that they give it in that movie. They don't call it Sky World in the movie. Oh, man, I, w- I would love to uh, have tried it. But uh, it was long gone before we went to either one of those parks. All right. I got another arrow on my list. Orient Express at Worlds of Fun. Oh, okay. That was the other arrow looper where the loops interlocked. That's such a weird thing. It's a weird statement to make. It's like the other interlocking loop roller coaster. Because, yeah, you got Loch Ness Monster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg, and then you got Orient Express. (laughs) Because, yeah, there had to be more than one, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. And at, well, it, not in the same category. It's not a uh, continuous circuit, but uh, lightning loops at Great Adventure also featured interlocking arrow loops. Oh, good call. Yeah. So actually, there was a third one, sort of. It's kind of an asterisk on that. But. It's just another arrow, and it's a shame. And the interlocking loops look cool. They really do. It's, it's, it's too bad we didn't get to uh, get to this one in time. Well, we didn't get to it. You know, right after they took it out. It was a whole bunch of years after they took it out. I believe it's their their mouse. Their spinning mouse is on that plot. Oh. Spinning dragons. Dragons never spun this much? Yeah, dragons never spun this much. <laughs> right. A great tagline. Yeah. So they, yeah, so they were right in line with Kennywood and Six Flags Great America, where it's like Kennywood took theirs out in 2000, their Arrow Looper. Great America took Shockwave out in 2002, and then this Orient Express uh, was taken out in 2003. All right in a row there. So, all right, we're kind of relearning our history as we go through this. Uh, I know we lived through this once, but... uh, So there was sort of a small group of parks that kind of were getting out ahead of getting rid of their arrows. They just kind of had enough of that company, I guess. Yeah, oh yeah, and parks uh, that are all owned by different companies, too. It wasn't just like one chain... Uh, yeah, for whatever reason, though, Orient, Orient Express, I don't think I've ever met anyone or seen it in writing, uh, anyone who was a fan of that ride. <laughs> uh, it's very possible that that ride actually really sucked because I feel like that, that one has had a really, you know, toward the end of its run, it had a really bad reputation. It was known for being really rough, and I don't know that anybody really liked it. Like, it was, it was rough even for Arrow kind of thing. Uh, you know, that being said, I'm a huge fan of Drakenfire. That, that was like the, the roughest uh, arrow supposedly ever made. So, I mean, I may not have had a problem with Orient Express at all, but supposedly that, that one was not well received at any point, really. But I, I would have loved to ride it. That's that's on my list as well. I got to jump out. Let me jump out with a coaster myself. Uh, I'm going to say XLR8. Oh, another arrow. Otherwise known as Accelerate, if you say it fast enough. Say it fast enough and don't think about it. And don't, <laughs> XLR8. Hmm. This one, uh, yes, another arrow. Uh, however, this one very different than what we have been talking about. It's an arrow suspended roller coaster. This one was at Astro World in or outside Houston, Texas. And we, uh, I know neither one of us ever got there. I've definitely watched POVs on, of this ride multiple times. And 
I do recall it looking really good. It, it looked right up there with the current bat, you know, or vortex in uh, in Canada. Yeah, that that w- that opened in 1984. That was the same year as Big Bad Wolf, which I did not realize. Interesting. So after Bat at Kings Island, after that fiasco, XLR8 and Big Bad Wolf were the first two to open. So so actually, this could be really good, or it could have been really good. Oh, that sucks that they didn't save that. They didn't move it. <sighs> Darn shame. And I also know, and I don't know how long it lasted or how if it was a... I feel like I read somewhere it was was it annual? Was it only was it for Halloween for Fight Fest? But they turned half the train backwards. I'm a little fuzzy on that since I never was there myself. And that looked like it was really a cool experience as well. Oh, so weird. And I would have loved I would have loved to have tried that. Classic Ar- Arrow suspended roller coaster. It's just those things are amazing. Well then what about the bat at King's Island? Or just bat? Well, is that your next entry? I mean that's on my list too, yeah. Uh I went accelerate though first. I was trying to go for an oddball one. <laughs> the bats on my list. I would uh, I would love to have ridden that. And you know, I I saw a video of it again for this episode, and it really looks crazy. It really was not engineered properly. It swings oh, out yeah. way too far at a couple of points, where it looks like yeah, it's, you it's it. really hitting the the top of the uh, I guess whatever the stopper is, and, and it but it's like it's it's too hard too fast at certain points. They really screwed that up. Uh, Arrow did. Yeah, I know. I, I, I again did not watch it just recently, but I have seen it multiple times. And yeah, there's, there's, it def, it maxes out at least a couple times, and it looks violent. And then oddly enough, but then there's like other parts of it that look really almost too tame. It, it wasn't well balanced at all. <laughs> like there, there's no real drop. I think you just kind of gradually start weaving down, and so the the swing out is really tame for a little bit while you're get, getting speed. And then all of a sudden, yeah, you like hit a valley and the thing almost rips off the track. Yeah. Uh, you swing out so far, it just looks insane. Well, I mean, it's only open for, I don't know what, a few weeks over a couple seasons or it something. Like, yeah, it, it barely ran during its existence. And you could see why, because yeah, it didn't look, uh, didn't look like it was ready for prime time. No, no, it didn't. It almost should never have opened, but... It did so officially. You know, it's a valid thing to be on here. You know, although you know, otherwise it would just be like the same as any other prototype Arrow half built in their lot in Utah. That you know, we're not going to debate on that stuff or talk about that stuff right now. But no, this was a fish, an officially opened ride at a major park. Just didn't last long. Uh, well, we touched on it. Let's let's finish Six Flags Astro World. I actually do have a second ride. Well, it was in more than one park, but Ultra Twister. Oh, jeez. Okay. The infamous Togo creation. Just a bizarre looking thing. I knew of this ride from its time in Great Adventure. I was in the park when that ride was there. However, I was very young. I was not tall enough to ride. It, it, it truly belongs in this category for me where I just never got around to it because I was never in a park where I could have ridden it. I mean, from again, from this is one of those ones that from everything I've heard about it, even some of the, the videos that do exist of people riding it and they're just groaning and <laughs> like, it's not, it's not screams of joy. It's like, it, uh. it, and from what I know about Togo, the Togo rides I have ridden, I have to imagine this ride was very painful. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, it's Togo. So, yeah. it's Togo, man. It's Togo. Come on. I mean, the couple of rides that uh, I've done, or we both done, they were they're, they're shit. Well, we, we did the one that essentially it was like the next the next generation of Ultra Twister, which was Viper at Great Adventure. And that was painful as hell. Oh, that was terrible. Yeah, I, I, I can't imagine. And I believe Ultra Twister did have similar, if not the same kind of restraints, those weird half over the shoulders that just came down straight on your shoulders yeah well they, they all like that one and then shockwave at king's dominion even though it was a stand-up had a similar thing i i think yeah i guess that's just that was just their main restraint that was their go-to yeah and it was so, so uncomfortable so i don't think i would want to do this a lot and i probably would be fine with it being out of existence if i just got to ride it once <laughs> so this is one of those a true curiosity one but but enough that it's on my list. Like, I really do wish I could have written it. 
Uh, okay. Yeah, and this is also, we haven't really described it. it it's a difficult ride to describe. Uh, j just, just look it up, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, it's a, it's a side rail design. The rails are on the side, the running rails. Yeah. So you're, you're really in the middle. I guess it's like, it's a Heartline coaster where you're, the whole thing is, you are literally in the, the center line of the track. And then they actually did rings around it. So like you're riding through this ring structure the whole time. The lift was vertical and the drop was, I think, maybe even vertical or near vertical, which was different for the time that that ride was done. That's, that's very common now, but, you know, that wasn't back then in the 80s. Um, yeah, it was like you would do it forwards and then it would drop down below and then do and then you do it backwards. The drop down looked sort of like the Intamin first gen freefall towers work, I think. That's what it sort of looked like. Oh, with like the bottom kind of comes out and you drop below the track. Yeah. So I feel like that probably, even the transition there must have been rough as hell, I would imagine. Well, it is on those int Intamin uh, first gen free falls. Oh, yeah. Nice and rough. <laughs> what, is my turn? Yeah. What do you got? Can I group some rights together? It's, it's probably not right, but can I do it anyway? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Is it not... Uh acceptable by the uh, theme park podcast board well just to kind of move things along you know okay i'm gonna i'm gonna say it's fine uh there are a couple of wooden coasters that I'm kind of curious about i'm sure they weren't good but <laughs> but again yeah you never know till you ride it and megazeph is one of those that was a cci that was at uh, the old Jazzland, which became uh, Six Flags New Orleans. And again, there, I, I'm sort of grouping rides here. I, I haven't gotten to the other two yet because I don't really have a, a whole lot to say about them. Uh, but this one, I saw a video of it recently and it looked really long. It just kept going and going and going. And it looked like it had a bunch of speed to it. I don't know, CCI is, is weird. Because I, I think they did more rides that I actually like than I care to admit, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I want to write off that company, and but they've actually done a bunch of damn good work. Like Boulder Dash at Lake Compounds or Cornball Express at Indiana Beach. So, I don't know. Megazeph could have been good. I would love to try this ride, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll go that far for that. I, I wouldn't actually go that far about this park, though. No, yeah, and... That's a good distinction to make. <laughs> yeah, nothing from this park made my list actually. So, but I'm glad you had Megas F on here. That's fine because that would be the most interesting ride they had there. I think to me, I mean, I, I, I don't, I hate that it's gone and the way that it happened. That that does suck. And you know, I'm all for more parks in the country overall. I mean, I wish it was there. We would have at some point gotten around to it if it was there. I will say, though, um, looking at the trains, this looks uh, kind of like a villain. Well, I think they're Gerschlauer trains. It's the Gerschlauer trains. Okay. So yeah. how, I wonder – and also I, I can tell from the picture here that it's uh, the Steel Supports. Yep. So are we dealing with another villain here? Is this like a really nasty ride? So uh, that just actually piqued my curiosity even more that I, I, I guess I really would like to ride this one. All right, cool. That's a cool one. All right. You had uh, you had another like Woody like that, and I want yeah, and then there's two others I kind of want to lump in there, Texas Giant, at Six Flags Over Texas, and the reason why I have that on there, is I'm just curious which one was dumber, Texas Giant or Mean Streak, because they were both din, <laughs> and it was I think Texas Giant was like 1990 I think, and then Mean Streak was 91. They were back to back. And they're both just like giant wooden coasters. And Mean Streak was not good. And I just wonder how, how Texas Giant compares or compared. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting question. Because um, by itself, I don't know if I'm really interested. I don't know if it would have made my list. But just to compare it to another ride that I do know. Yeah, that would be kind of fun. Um, I mean, I want to say, though, that it, it probably is the better one or was. And I, I'm just going by the fact that that ride had fans. <laughs> Meat Streak had no fans. <laughs> uh, especially considering the park that that ride was in. Uh, I mean, Cedar Point has a ton of fans. Maybe, maybe the most among enthusiasts. Uh, they love that park. 
But yet, I don't recall Mean Streak ever really getting that much love. It was always just kind of that forgotten coaster in the back of the park. Every time I was there, it never had a wait, even on some insanely crowded days where everything else in that park would uh, get jammed up and uh, not that ride. No, I never saw a line for it. Never. You know, whereas Texas Giant, uh, although I wasn't going to that park uh, way back, uh, I, mean, I obviously, we never, we never went to that park when that ride was, existed. By the time we got there, it had already been Rocky Mountain. But, you know, I, it was on TV on the Discovery Channel specials. That ride seemed to have fans and had a bit of a following. So, you know, at least based on that, I, I want to believe that one was the better one. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I actually would have liked to have tried it just to see what it was all about. Uh, but then another one I want to lump in here is uh, Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. And, again, it's like the only reason I'm curious, and I'm talking about, like, the original, original Rattler. Because when it first opened, apparently uh, that first drop was too insane, and they had to modify it over the years. So I'm curious to see what that version was like. Oh, Okay. Because um, I, I looked up a video of it recently. Again, I researched for this episode, and it looked awful. But this was later after it was modified. No, I've definitely seen that footage, yeah, where it slows down to a crawl at different points. Oh, yeah. And it looked totally worthless. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah, you're kind of following a thread here. This is another ride like Texas Giant where we rewrote the modified steel version, uh, but never the original. This one, I yeah, I... I've never heard anything but bad things about the Rattler. But, okay, I mean, yeah, it, it was modified. So by the end, it wasn't what it was intended to be. You know, you're talking original opening day Rattler. I'm, cu- I, I'm curious to know what that too hot to handle version was like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure. I, I guess I'd join you on that one as well, on that adventure, that, that time machine ride. Yeah, and that was, I should mention, that was a Roller Coaster Corporation of America ride, which I totally forgot about. Okay, is that the company behind Son of Beasts? Yeah. Oh, damn. Now you, well, now you just put something in my head. Oh, you got one on the fly? Oh, go there. Why not? Go there. Do it. You want to talk opening day? I want to ride opening day Riverside Cyclone. Oh, okay. Yeah. I want to ride that original drop profile where it dropped an extra, like, 10 or 20 feet, whatever it was. <laughs> uh, and was even more insane and, and unrideable than the version we wrote. I almost can't fathom what that might be. Just because, that, unlike Rattler, where they completely sliced the balls off, and it was actually, it barely had enough speed to get through the rest of the course. I think it was that upper, that part of the, that went on the quarry ledge that where it probably got really slow. Yeah, where uh, it, it, it just like wound around in like a awful looking horribly engineered helix and at like two miles an hour it looked terrible yeah and i think it was the same thing where they chopped like 20 feet off the drop or something it was like they kind of went too far with it okay but but where it killed that ride like in some ways it almost wasn't enough for the cyclone at new england yeah formerly riverside park because that ride still was ridiculously insane and that's what i'm saying i can't imagine what how much more it could have been like it would have to be. It would be like slicing you in half. It'd be like severing your spine every ride. <laughs> oh my god! Like I just can't. I just. I don't know. I just. But at the same time, I know that's an exaggeration. Like people weren't actually dying on it, so therefore I would like to ride it. I'd like to be able to experience it at least once. Probably only. I probably could only take it once. <laughs> well, it's like um, okay. Are we the age that we are now? <laughs> well, yeah, we have to be, right? It took us this long to invent the time machine. Okay, you know, all to right. Get the together. So now... For Peabody to yeah. invent the time machine? Yeah, we can't step into our own bodies, you know, 10 years ago. I feel that, that's too too much of a cheat. <laughs> okay. So, so like, we're not that old, but we're not as young as we used to be either. So, yeah, it's like, I probably could only take that Riverside Cyclone original version, like, once or twice. But I'd love to try it. All right, so I guess I got that one on the fly. I'll throw it back to you. There, there were two older Woodies that I wish I, I could have gotten to. Uh, Mr. Twister at Elitch Gardens. Mr. Twister. <laughs> right, that little thing. You need that one? Hey, Mr. Where's Mr.? Yeah. Because the original one was uh, really beloved from everything that I've read. And anyone that wrote it apparently really liked it. 
and that's a shame that it's gone. But they did build Twister 2, which is supposed to be modeled after the uh, the original Mr. Twister, and then also Twister at Knobles is modeled after Mr. Twister. So I guess, I guess you can sort of get an idea. Between those two rides, you can get an idea of what the original was like, maybe. Twister 2, the new batch? <laughs> yes, the new batch. That one? I mean, Knobles Twister is more of an homage, I think, though. it's They did modify it quite a bit. Mm, okay. It had to fit into a much smaller footprint. Uh, that whole lift doubling back on itself. Uh, none of that was in the original design. Okay, so it's it's just it's like the helix around the station or near the station. I think that's the biggest part. That's like a kind of a copy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the rest is kind of original Knobel's design. So that Mister Twister was was from the '60s. That was like 1965, uh, but it closed in '94. And then another one, another older Woody that. Would have been interesting to check out is Screech and Eagle at La Swordsville. Because that one was from like 1940. That's even older. Oh, you're blowing my mind with this one. Uh, um, that's that's long gone. That park's long done. That park had a couple of names. What was it called? Let me look this up. Oh, uh, Americana Park was the original? Yes, yes, yes. 1977, the name was changed to Americana Amusement Park. Yeah, sorry. I, I kind of knew mm. it as La Swordsville. That's like when I first discovered it. Well, no, because it, it briefly reopened as the well, sort of the lake again in oh. 2002. And it's like south central Ohio. Is it actually closer to Kings Island? Uh, it is, yeah. Yes. Yes, it's closer to Kings Island. It's, it's nowhere. Much it's, it's, yes, it's almost right there. We almost went there, is my point. They reopened it and under the original name in 2002. And. It only lasted that one season, though. Did not turn a profit, and they closed it permanently after that. We went to Kings Island in 2003, and it was it would have been on the itinerary if it had stayed open. I was very aware of the park at that time and the historic roller coaster, and uh, it would have happened. But they did not reopen for the 2003 season, and we were not able to do it, so... What was the ride again? <laughs> Screeching Eagle. That's another one, too, just... where it's like, I get these eagles mixed up in my mind because there's Screeching Eagle, Screaming Eagle, and American Eagle. Uh, and that's just a classic out and back, right? Yeah, it's not a huge ride. 70 feet tall. But, uh, but you know, old classic Woody. Would it would have been cool to check it out. Because not all of those, I mean, a lot of those are, are good. You know, the ones that are still standing. Oh, sure. You know, I'm thinking like Lake Winnie's uh, Cannonball and uh yankee cannonball at canopy oh yeah that's you know, fun. a bunch of those are are good I, I like comet oh great escape oh no i'm uh, sorry no, uh, hershey park comet hershey park comet yeah that's a good one too the comet as far as i'm concerned yeah yeah and <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't know for whatever reason i'm not a huge fan of the great escape one no i mean it's, it's, it's okay though it's yeah. not terrible uh and then the ultimate is phoenix oh definitely yeah I'm going to switch gears here, away from coasters for, for a moment again. This is a weird one. Gladiator's Gauntlet, a short-lived ride at Busch Gardens, Williamsburg. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was like the early 90s. It was right before we started going, I guess. I can't. I'm trying to get a year on it now, and I'm having a hard time. It was a crazy... It was one of the very early versions of a... Two arms on either end holding a gondola in the middle. What we think of as a Huss topspin today is it's still the most common version of that. The boat was like split into two instead of being one whole boat. There was like two, I think, that swung independently with a with just like some dead space, just a connector in the center between the two different halves. It's really funky. You really have to look up a picture of it yourself, I guess, to really grasp the whole idea. Yeah. By all accounts, it was not a successful ride. Like, it didn't operate a whole ton. It was closed a lot. A lot of uh, maintenance issues. It was only there for, like, two or three seasons. I know I've read that it was really noisy. People talked about how, like, loud it was. The motors were really loud. <laughs> but it just... I do love a good spectacular flat. Uh, we have done an episode or two about flats. And this one just kind of intrigues me. I just really would like to try it. If you're wondering, it was in the Festa Italia section of the park. Vacoma Canyon Trip, apparently, is what it was. I'd love to know what it was about. Non-inverting. So I guess 
we both know it, although it's also a weird, you know, ride that not many people probably know. Surf dance. Oh yeah. Our very, our very own adventure land. I think it was probably most similar to that. That was one boat. It wasn't split into two, but it was a very similar idea. You can look that up. I, I it's hard to describe all these rides. They're very they're top spin like, but they yeah, they didn't go upside down and the boat was swinging instead. So it was more of uh, these other kind of ride types were a little weird. And that one at Adventureland, was, that was not a Pacoma. That was a Mundial. All right. I'm going to name one that's a little, a little strange. There was a park called MGM Grand Adventures in Las Vegas. It was, it was built in the 90s or opened in 1990, I think. 1990, 1991, something like that. And th- there was just, I don't know, there was like a boom happening at that time with movie studio themed theme parks because <laughs> you had disney yeah. mgm uh in 89 you had universal studios florida in, in 90 and you had this thing mgm grand adventures and they had a couple of rides that i'm kind of curious about at least one of them you can find a video of it online which is the uh, the backlot river tour because all these uh movie studio theme yeah. parks have had to have a backlot <laughs> tour uh except this was on a river not in a, in a tram car. That's really bizarre. So it's really just like a dark ride outside on the river. It, it didn't look great, but I don't know. I'm just kind of a sucker for that kind of stuff. Like they're supposed to be filming different movies and then, you know, you kind of get caught up in the middle of their filming, th- them filming the action. Like they had Creature from the Black Lagoon pop up out of the water. And at one point, I think the finale was like, supposed to be like some sort of war scene where a helicopter would be shooting at you. Uh, I think a shack would, uh, supposed to catch fire, you know, stuff like that. And I just think that that would, that would have been fun to check out. This is just weird. Why is it a river tour? I don't know. <laughs> Who thought of this? this is, this makes less sense than Jurassic park being a river adventure. Like why would a movie backlot take you on a river? Well, at least with Jurassic Park River Adventure, that came from that came from the Jurassic Park book, at least. This, I, they just made up. I don't know. Yeah, what the hell? And then I'm looking at this, and it's essentially Jungle Cruise boats. Jungle Cruise or oh, yeah. Jaws boats? Or, yeah, it's maybe a cross between those two. A cross between Jungle Cruise or Jaws boats. Yeah. The magic behind the camera. Oh, God. <laughs> The creature. All right, yeah, it's, it's hilarious looking. You should watch a video of that later. It's, it's pretty okay, funny. Okay, all right. Now I'm on board with you. Yeah. I would like to try this because this looks I, – I think this might be in the category of so bad it's good. Because it's like it, – it looks like they put in some effort, but like they didn't go all the way with it or maybe they just didn't have quite the budget that they really wanted or they didn't hire the most talented people. I, I don't know where the shortcoming was, but it, it looked charming. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, wow. I mean, that, that looked like that would have been kind of fun and cheesy and silly and stuff. But really, the, the real ride that I would love to have checked out is Deep Earth Exploration. It was their dark ride adventure. But they did this in, like, the early 90s. They were, like, a little ahead of Indiana Jones Adventure and Spider-Man, I, I believe. So you would board a pod. It was, like, Simpod on a track. And it was supposed to be like you're going, like, journey to the center of the Earth. And so when you're in the pod, uh, I can't remember if there was a screen in there. I mean, obviously, there's audio. There's stuff for you to, you know, that's supposed to be happening. That's supposed to tell a story. So you're totally enclosed in the pod. But then at certain points, the pod had doors that would open and you could see out into real sets. So it's supposed to be a combination of, like, simulator and real sets. And it just sounded really interesting. An interesting uh, stepping stone, like between traditional dark rides and what eventually would be Spider-Man. Yeah, and it's like forgotten about and never talked about. Right, because I remember reading about this years ago, and I just I never forgot about it. This one kind of captured my imagination, and I really wish I could have experienced it. Ride vehicles designed by Intamin. Ah, okay. The story and the ride itself was R and R Creative Designs. It looks kind of cheesy. Well, yeah, I don't know how well they pulled it off, but... Like, they may not have had the best budget. Wow, that's a crazy one. Okay. That's probably my, my biggest weird mention. Whoa. All right. What about, though, um, at the Hilton, the, the Star Trek stuff? 
all the experience. I mean, does that count here? Does that push it too far? No, that counts. Sure. Um, yeah, that is something that has uh, has become legendary, or really, it was like legendary in its own time. Yeah, those were those were famous. They made TV rounds. I mean, they were getting play, you know, airplay, and people were talking about them. Yeah, I really hate that I that I missed all that. Uh, opened in January 1998. Okay, and I guess it, it was a simulator. And then in 2004, they added the Borg Invasion 4D attraction. And then the whole thing closed in 2008. Apparently, it got caught up in the sale of Paramount to Cedar Fair. <laughs> it was, like, operated by Paramount Parks. And then... The Cedar Fair, I guess, had to take that over with the parks. They didn't really want it, and uh, also they, you know, they're not into keeping rights to franchises, so they were not not interested in, you know, re-upping on the Star Trek rights to keep that going. So they they let it go. It also, I'm also reading here, there was a decline in, in admissions, so it was already kind of not doing as well. Yeah, it's tough. It's it, even as groundbreaking as something might be. I mean, it's tough when it's a kind of a standalone attraction. I mean, it's not surrounded by a park. And Vegas, you know, Vegas did that whole, we're going to become family friendly. We're going to kind of Disneyfy Las Vegas. They went through that whole thing from the mid 90s into the early 2000s. And then around 2005, after 10 years or so of that, they kind of turned back away from that. Yeah. And I think, I think this closing was another casualty of that, too. But anyway, it, you know, I'm really curious to check it out. I, I wish we could have tried it. You know, what I've seen from it, it looked very quality. That's what made it a, a, a legend in its own time, was that apparently the effects were off the charts. Like, it was definitely universal, if not Disney quality. Like, they pulled it off somehow, the this, this standalone attraction. You know, it, it was associated with the Paramount Parks, but yet it wasn't that quality. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was way above and beyond, yeah. You know, this was not a, uh, a Tomb Raider from King's Island experience. Oh, or God, yeah. Don't be thinking like that. The simulator might have been right up there with some of the best ever done. You know, it's depends on who you ask. And it, it's a weird thing. You know, Vegas, it's like a lot of people who did it, I think, were probably not enthusiasts for parks in general. Uh, it's, it's kind of a weird thing. So, and I'm, you know, I'm not a, really a Star Trek fan. So the theme doesn't really resonate with me. But, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a highly themed attraction fan. And I think on that level, I really would love this. Okay. This one. I... Might seem kind of petty. I, I don't know what the right word is, but I, I guess I kind of would have liked to have seen what Rocket Rods was all about. It's like it seems really dumb on paper, but I don't know why. I don't know why I feel like I wanted to do that. All right, you're, you're going there. That was on my list. Um, oh, it was okay. I don't know if petty is the word you're looking for there. I don't. You feel almost a little embarrassed that it's on your list. Yes, I, I kind of feel embarrassed that it's on my list. No, I don't feel embarrassed. Um, I, I'm, I'm endlessly fascinated by that. Uh, that is possibly uh, Disney's single biggest failure that ever that ever got that far. <laughs> Whoa, I mean, that's a, it, that's quite a statement. If you want to consider the entire park of California Adventure, <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe that's your biggest failure. <laughs> okay. But if we're just talking individual attractions, I mean, this really failed on so many levels. The fact that it they removed something that people actually liked, it was beloved in, in a lot of respects, and the fact that they didn't design it right, and I, I believe it went through at least one redesign at one point, though, like they poured more money into it after the initial mistakes were already made, and then it still only opened for like a few months again, and then closed. Like, such a failure I, I, on a financial level. It made, it was bad PR. It was just a lot of, a lot of bad. For Disney. <laughs> I guess, yeah, th this ride kind of fascinates me because you're taking, yeah, an existing ride and completely changing it, but still trying to use the same infrastructure. It's just weird. You really have to question, you know, what were they thinking? It just does, it just seems so obvious that this wouldn't work. Yeah, because it's not like something like Alien Encounter. What, what did it replace? Rocket to the Moon or Mission to Mars? Well, it was Mission to Mars. Yeah, because it's not like that where you're introducing new ride hardware, but you're still sitting in a seat. You know, this is like you're, you're taking the ride vehicle 
the original ride vehicle off the track, you're putting a different one on, and then you're having it go multiple times faster <laughs> than it was intended to. And it's just like, what did you think would happen? Of course, it's it's not going to be able to handle it. Well, it's yeah, they, they took a leisure a leisure ride and tried to turn it into a thrill ride. The whole thing was just fucked from the start. Really, is the problem. Yeah. And again, I, I just don't. How did this ever get out of the first boardroom meeting? You know, what are, what are the risks? What are what are the rewards? Is even if it's worse, is this going to be very good? Uh, how did it pass any of those tests? To even get to like the drawing board phase, let alone all the way to being built and opened and advertised and marketed and the whole nine yards. Well, yeah, because it's like, wait, 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 wait. If you want to do this, hang on a second. <laughs> then we need to like completely make a new ride from scratch. We can't just use what's there that wasn't meant for it. Not to mention the fact that what was there was already from 19 whatever, 65 or whatever year, 67. So it's like it was already aging and then just, oh, like. Holy goodness. I don't know. I just don't understand. <laughs> but that's why this ride is endlessly fascinating. And it did operate kind of like a list, uh, a ride on our list earlier, the bat. It did get to open at some point and people did ride it, you know, as an, as an attraction, not just testing it. Yeah. I kind of would love to just take one spin on it, see what it was all about. Looking at a video of it, it was a long ride too. It just kept going and going. Well, yeah, the, the, People Mover uh, at Disneyland, I think, definitely was longer than the one at World. Rocket Rods was almost like Test Track before Test Track. It was just like garbage. It was garbage Test Track. <laughs> garbage. Well, it's like that's that would have been the right way to do it. It still wouldn't have been a good idea, I don't think. <laughs> but you would have had to have completely rebuilt uh, the People Mover track and supports the whole thing probably from scratch with like a, a test track ride system and then you could have high speed sections with banking actual banking imagine that <laughs> what a concept <laughs> and that technology already existed or was already being in the works around the same time at least yeah because rocket rods was yeah 98 to 2000 i mean they were actually at the same time they were working on a system that would work or something like that well, it was like Disney got caught up in the uh, the whole thrill ride thing, you know, because that was the 90s. You know, that was – everything was big thrills, big coasters, taller, faster, and they wanted their thrill rides too. And, like, this was their answer or one of their answers, and it was just – it was completely misguided. Yeah, it's one thing to want to go for a thrill. It's another thing to just, you know, go for stupid. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was like, yeah, you know, they, they, they thought it would be quick and easy, and it was just a nightmare. The biggest uh, biggest mess. Oh, and I forgot another reason why it's probably the biggest single ride failure. It also engulfed another ride in the process. They went down two attractions for this one. They uh, eliminated their circle vision and used that as the cue for this. And then last but not least, the fact that all oh, that track is still there to this day. <laughs> yeah. And it still looks just as bad as you think it would. Like, I know Disney's got their head up their own ass for the most part, and they probably feel like it's fine, but it's not fine. It doesn't look any better than any other closed, decaying ride at a Six Flags Park or something. It looks ridiculous. It's awful. You know, and that's the original. That's Disneyland. That really is unacceptable that that just sits there and doesn't get used. I didn't I didn't want to get on a rant there, but <laughs> couldn't help it. Okay, you're making me feel better about this. That's good. Yeah, no, that was that was that was a very good one. If you didn't bring it up, I would have. Okay, so it's my turn. Okay, so I think we have to give Universal some love here. I was thinking about the Ghostbusters attraction at Universal Studios Florida. That, that's uh, where uh, Twister ended up, when, and then now uh, Jimmy Fallon. The Ghostbusters, uh, uh, let's, let's get the name, I guess. What was it actually called? I think it was Spooktacular. Ghostbusters Spooktacular. A little cheesy. Yeah, a little. Just a little. I've seen parts of it on YouTube. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen the whole show. I don't know if it's because it doesn't exist or just because I didn't actually sit and watch the whole thing. Uh, no, I've seen uh, footage of the whole show, a at least the um, the second version, because there were two versions. That's right. There's two versions. Well, I don't know. I don't really know if I would like one versus the other, so maybe you can comment on that. If, is there, was there one point in time we'd rather see this thing? Uh, 
Uh, probably the second version. I don't know if the main show was any different. or And with the second version, they may have just added a pre-show. Yeah, I think you're right. I think they added the pre-show in the second version. Originally just a queue and then the main show. It wasn't really like a 4D show. It wasn't exactly a stunt show. I'm, I'm not sure. It was just like, it was more just kind of like a show show. I don't know. Was I mean, I thought, I, stunt show would be the closest thing, I think. They didn't really do stunts, though. There were no stunts? I mean, I there were effects. So. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't think, like, the guys, like, tumbled around the Ghostbusters. So it's just a special effects demonstration. Yeah, because they would make the ghosts appear in front of you. And I, I think it, it was essentially the finale to the first film, where they were uh, on the rooftop of the apartment building, and they fought off some ghosts, and eventually the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Oh, and Gozer. Yeah, and the show didn't right. last that long. That was kind of like, uh, that was even, I had a short run even for Universal. It was like 1990s and 1996. Mm, all right, so that may tell us something. It might have not been very good. And they had to rework it one time in there too. I wonder if it just didn't do the numbers and, you know, didn't survey well and they just they pulled the plug early. Yeah, maybe. Let's go over to another studio park. The old Disney MGM. I would have liked to have seen the very first incarnation of that backlot tour because it was ridiculous. All right, you're talking you're talking opening year. Yeah, when it was okay. like eight hours long or something. It like took your whole day. Well, it, yeah, it essentially was meant to be just about your entire day because that was like the only thing. That, it was just everything combined into one, pretty much. Yeah, it, it was like at least half the park was the tour. You just went from one soundstage to another, and then the back lot and Catastrophe Canyon, and the whole thing, it was like those old New York and San Francisco streets, like you couldn't walk over there initially. It was That was all part of the, the tour. Yeah, and then also, uh, don't forget animation. Right. I believe was the finale of the whole thing. It was like the last part of it, maybe? Or was it? I don't remember. That's another... the first part. Yeah, it, it kept changing so much in the early years that it, it's hard to remember what was what, but... Yeah, it changed so much. But I, I I would have liked to have seen that very first original incarnation, just just to see the uh, the original vision, you know. Because by the time I got to it, it it had been cut way back and really chopped up. Well, yeah, it was already separate experiences. I think at least three. Right, the soundstage tour was a separate thing you would queue up for versus the tram tour versus animation. And like, yeah, I mean, I got to it in '96, and even by then, it, it was already yeah, like that. Uh, I did it earlier than you did, although despite the fact that it was only a few years in, it was 1992, it had already been altered. Because, again, that original version only ran for, like, the first 12 months or so. You know, there was original, like, in the New York streets, like a Dick Tracy acted out scene, and the, the, the dip machine was, like, actually operating and spraying people. And it, it, stuff I've only <laughs> seen on YouTube that was already already done away with, even by 1992. It would be interesting to uh, check out. All right. What do you got? Uh, we're talking backlot tours. What about Universal backlot tour in uh, in Florida? Oh, okay. If I had to whittle this down to like a top 10, it would not make it. It's lower, but I don't know. I, I still am sort of fascinated. I guess I'm, I, this is fascinating to me because I almost I kind of wonder like what it really could have been. Because there really never was a whole hell of a lot of actual filming in this in this park. I mean, I just feel like all you and, and I. I mean, I've kind of read this a little bit too. That you just kind of went around the park. It was more like just an in-park tram, but you never you just got on and off at the same spot. It didn't actually transport you anywhere. I, that's sort of the the descriptions I've, I've I guess I've gotten over time. Like it didn't really do a whole hell of a lot. No, and I I think that's. Uh why I'm not terribly interested in it because yeah because I think it just kind of drove you around the park pretty much you didn't you didn't get out right it was just on the tram the whole time I think so yeah there was no walking portion I don't believe I'm pretty sure I've seen a video of this yeah I I, I think I definitely have and it it looked pretty pretty bad <laughs> I want to <laughs> say it did yeah I guess it'd be neat to see the park that early on and the the psycho house the other Psycho House, and, and was actually used in one of the later Psychos, right? The made-for-TV one It or was, something. Uh, yeah, Psycho 4, I think. I don't know. It's just really funny that I guess they just felt they had to have one. 
They just kind of threw it in there. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. I'm going to do another grouping here, if that's okay with you. Group away. There are a couple of Disney dark rides that I would have liked to have seen them. But, you know, you were saying if you made a top 10 list. I don't think these would make my top 10 list. But I, I, I am still kind of curious. And they are Adventure Through Inner Space, World of Motion, and Horizons. Kind of a common theme there. They're all the edutainment kind of rides. You've done two of them. You've done Horizons and World of Motion. Uh, yeah, I've done two of those three. You know, I've seen videos of all of them. And they looked, you know, not the mo like the most exciting rides. But I still would have liked to have seen them. I'm sure those rides are on, like, everybody's list if they didn't get to them. Well, because it, it's been enough years now. Yeah, a lot of enthusiasts out there. A lot of probably, like, Disney Park fanatics out there that were too young to, to be able to do those. I mean, inner space is on a different tier since that. When, what year did that go out? 85. Yeah, 67 to 85. And then, of course, the other two closed in the 90s in, uh, in Epcot. Uh, inner space was Disneyland. I guess we should mention, if you didn't know, that uh, star, the, the, the land, the original Star Tours in uh, Tomorrowland replaced Adventure through inner space. It's funny. That one is, I was very curious about it when I first learned about it. And then when I was able to see some video, I immediately became less interested. It didn't seem like it, it had a whole lot to it. Uh, I think it was really better on paper. It was better in the minds of, of the guys at WED that came up with it. And then it just, they never really were able to figure out how to display it, how to make <laughs> it work. It just, like, how do we make it seem like you're really doing this? You're really shrinking down to the size of an atom and seeing what atoms look like from the inside. Or it, I, I, it's like, how do you portray that? And, and in physical sets, because this predates being able to really adequately do screens and take you on an adventure that way. So it was had to be done with just physical sets of some sort. And it just, I don't think it really worked. Yeah, I, I, I get you. I, I, I definitely feel you when you say, you know, once you started to, to really look into it and you, and you saw a video of it and stuff, it's like, yeah, that doesn't look very exciting. I mean, I kind of feel that for all three of these. Now, the other ones, I'm, uh, I guess I feel differently because I actually did them. <laughs> and they were all right. It, it, it's just—it's a weird thing. It's—it's it's the whole Epcot conundrum. It's you know I want I, I want to that's a park you know I want to be stuck in the nostalgia and be like ah oh, they should never have taken this out and that out and this out. But then at the same time, again they did keep Spaceship Earth. It's still close enough to what it originally was. They keep tinkering with the end, but the whole like two thirds, three quarters of the ride is essentially the same. And it's like that's a, having that one ride uh, every once in a while, every few years is like enough. And then having two more of those in the same park. And, and so theoretically you do it in the same day. Uh, it's just a lot of that same kind of thing. It's yeah. It's just too much of rides talking at you and, and trying to get you to learn stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, and just, just scenes of, you know, animatronics, but not the best ones because each of these rides had like, 30 to 80 or i know world of motion had the record i think for the most i think individual so. yeah. animatronic figures in one ride and it was a hell of a lot so they can't all it's it's kind of like the whole president's effect where like some of them just move a finger <laughs> or like okay. tap their toe because it's like they couldn't possibly make all of them the, the best version of the animatronic of that day because it would just be too way, way too expensive and way too much to maintain so i guess in the end it's like i get it Spaceship Earth is good enough. I can't say it should all still be there in that form today because that's ridiculous. <laughs> but you know, definitely, if it were if it were possible to uh, to go back in time, like I, I, you definitely would enjoy these. Okay, I uh, I, I want to be there with you because I want to see your reaction because I you definitely would enjoy it, and I'd enjoy seeing them after so many years too. Uh, okay, we're talking dark rides. I'm going to go earthquake. I'll group these together. I have Earthquake and Pirate Ride from Cedar Point. I have those too! Because I would love to see what a Cedar Point dark ride looks like. Okay, well, do you know the history of this? Because I, I learned about these two when I was uh, doing research for this episode. Well, the Pirate Ride was a Pirates of the Caribbean ripoff. I know that. Although it wasn't 
actually in water or you were on a track. It was just traditional track dark rides. Oh, now you're going to uh, – Earthquake. Well, I know what became of Earthquake. I know where it went after it was at Cedar Point. It went to the Great Escape. I think you're getting a couple of things mixed up. Oh, you know what? Okay. I think I know where I came from before Cedar Point. Yeah. Was it the Freedom Land? Yeah. So – Okay. It, okay. I put down the, the that Pirate Dark Ride and that Earthquake Dark Ride that was at Cedar Point. But then when I researched it – I found out that they both came from Freedom Land, which was in the Bronx in New York. And oh. that was like a Disneyland ripoff park. So I, I really, it's like, I would like to have visited that park to see them in their original context. Oh, yeah, that's a park that never really got off the ground. No, it was only around for five or six seasons. It was like 1960 to 1965, something like that. So it must've been pretty terrible. <laughs> Yeah, that's too bad. You know, it was supposed to be all themed to America and different regions of America. So they had their ripoff, you know, Main Street USA and uh, <laughs> their their knockoff Pirates of the Caribbean, which was in like a, a, a New Orleans uh, themed area. So they had okay. four dark rides there. They had the Pirate one, Earthquake one, which is themed to the uh, San Francisco earthquake in 19, early 1900s. Tornado, which was uh, supposed to be like you were going through a tornado in the Midwest. And they had one theme to, uh, it was called like Mine Caverns, I think. Something like that. Like you're, like you're in a little mine cart going through the uh, caverns. And so then the Pirate one and the Earthquake one both went to Cedar Point. Tornado went to Great Escape. And I guess the, the Mine Caverns one just got scrapped. Yeah, it was just called Buccaneers. But then Cedar Point is just called it like Pirate Ride, right? And then, yeah, they called it was, yeah, I didn't say that uh, because I didn't know. It, yeah, it was called just the Pirate Ride. That's <laughs> so stupid. So, <laughs> uh, they kept the name Earthquake, but then they had just the Pirate Ride. Uh, that's really weird to think that after all the history now, even still today, that park avoids dark rides. Even when the company as a whole is doing some in other parks. And yet, at one point in the 60s, they decided to get into dark rides. And, like, they purchased two at the same time. Yeah, well, I guess they got them cheap. Yeah. So, all right. I, I'll stick with my original uh, concept here, though, that I, I brought these up as Cedar Point rides. I wasn't thinking Freedom Land. That's a good one, though. I I, uh, I can't say that I wouldn't want to see that place. Maybe that would be a better way to experience these, actually. But I guess I was thinking of it from the context of, you know, being in Cedar Point, uh, what's a Cedar Point dark ride? I know they didn't create these. They bought them secondhand. But I don't know. I just still feel like it would be pretty uh, pretty neat to see them there. I know the uh, the pirate ride was the building that's next to Blue Streak, the Blue Streak station. And then Earthquake was uh, Snoopy Boutique. Uh, that was a can of worms, that one. Can we go back just for one minute? Turn back, turn back. Can we go back to Astro World just for just for a minute? I did want to mention that that park had the first Rapids ride. Now I know yeah. those early Rapids were not good. We know that from the ones that still exist. It's just like a small curiosity, I suppose. I mean, it's history. We did ride the first Flume. That's yeah. That's the only reason why I'm mentioning it here. Yeah, and the first Mine Train. We've gotten to those now, so I guess it would be kind of cool to have been able to complete that series. Uh, this is another one where it's like, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it. All right, I'll just throw it out there. Enchanted Voyage at King's Island. It's another dark ride that opened with the park where it was a uh, boat in a trough similar to Small World. And it was loaded up with a lot of uh, Hanna-Barbera animatronics. I guess, I mean, I would be interested just to see it, like the front of it, where it was a giant TV set. Yeah, it was like the boat would go into a giant TV set. So it was like you're going into the world of uh, the television world of Hanna-Barbera. So, I, I mean, I, that'd be kind of cool just to stand in front of that, I guess, and see it. The ride itself, not on my list. I, I don't know if I've actually seen much video. I've definitely seen a lot of stills, and it doesn't look very good. Yeah, it, you can see a video of it, but um, at least the one that I've found is uh, it's very dark. It's, it's hard to make out. Uh, a lot of it. There was no story, right? It was just the characters singing to you. I think it was like, it was really small world. They even had a repetitive song. Well, you brought that up. I mean, for me, it would be Phantom Theater. Yeah, I, 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 I get I you. Like the middle period of that, of that building, 
is where I want to see it. I'm interested in that in a, in a regional park uh, haunted mansion ripoff. Yeah, yeah. They tried to give it its own little story that it's like backstage at a theater, but more than not, and I and I've seen some video of it. There's a lot of just haunted mansion ripoff stuff in there. Yeah, well, it's like they put in an omni mover and mm-hmm. they made the the cars look like doom buggies and all that. No, they even yeah they even went that far. Yeah, but I, at the same time, I think it would be different enough. There is an interesting loose story thread there. I think it'll be fun. All all, all the way to just the, the 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 maestro guy playing the organ in the queue that looked really cool. In the early days, he would turn around and engage the people waiting, and it looked really cool. I definitely feel like a, a fully working version of that ride would be better than what it is now. Yeah, that's a good mention. Okay, how about Chaos at Opryland? Opryland, USA. How about it? It was a fun ride. Yeah, you did it. Oh. You, you actually got there. I don't know there. what it's doing on this list. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't do it. Yeah, the the park as a whole, I'm not really interested in. It, it's really that ride because that was a weird, different type of indoor coaster. It was a Vacoma Illusion. Ah, yes. And I don't, yeah, explain what it was like. It was really cool. I really liked it. Uh, I, I kind of feel like it was just the right ride. I was the right age. It was just perfect when I was there. But essentially, it was an attempt at, from Vacoma at making a kind of an off the shelf ready model uh, roller coaster to be like in a, a, a special effects indoor roller coaster that I guess could be made to fit different themes. The whole thing was one building, like the, the like the supports for the coaster were built within the supports for the building. It was all it would be constructed all together. So. They're just, we're trying to basically, you know, make it so that regional parks everywhere could each have their own kind of Space Mountain-like experience, I suppose. But then they, and I think this is what may have been the fatal flaw, I think it may have took off more than it did if they allowed it to be a little more of a roller coaster like Space Mountain is. It got a little too into their own heads, I think, thinking about making the effects uh, part of this thing work. And that's where it got a little weird. They kind of the actual roller coaster became a little less interesting and, and innovative. And throughout the majority of the ride, it was just a helix. You basically just wound down in outer uh, area of the of the building. Like there was a main middle chamber. It was actually a spiral uplift. And that was a place where they left it open for whatever kind of effects show you wanted to have. And then you wound down through an area in between between the outer wall and the inner wall of that chamber. So you had your own tunnel area, but you just kind of went down and around. It wasn't enough back and forth and buried up elements. The early idea of it, I think, was to actually have the, the riders wear some kind of goggles, some kind of uh, <laughs> uh, lenses. Uh, so not, I guess, something he- more heavy duty than just a 3D glass glasses type of thing, but like an actual... You know, goggles, but not not like we've, we've seen more recently with where the goggles themselves were phones, you know, because they didn't have that back then. This is a concept from the, like the 80s. Just goggles that you'd see through, but it would make screens on the side of the track. Supposedly, it would make it look like what you were what was on the screens was actually in front of you. It would take two screens from either side, and it would through the goggles, it would meld them into a, one image that was directly in front of you. So it would look like you were going through like holograms as you were riding. That sounds so cool. It sounds so cool, but it it, it also sounds really difficult to make that work. And well, yeah. it was, and it didn't work. And from what I understand, uh, Opryland had to give up on that pretty early on. I don't know. It's, it's something that you can't reproduce on you know on a video, on a POV or anything. So I you know, I don't know. It, that was already done away with by the time I wrote it. So I never actually put on the goggles. I did it after they gave up on that and then added more. What they did was they added more physical sets uh, in place of the virtual ones. And uh, it was cool, though. I loved it. It stuck with me. Had a very, uh, very fun uh, music track to go along with the ride. So Oh, did it now? Check that out. You know, if you've never heard that, you guys should check it out. Look it up. (laughs) 
Yeah, it just sounds like a crazy concept. I I, I would have been uh, very interested to have seen what that was like. Uh, all right. So I am going to go. Let's go back to Disney, and I have on my list the Disneyland Skyride. I think the fact that it went through Matterhorn Mountain is what kind of sells me on it. I would like to experience that. I know I'm sure this is one of those that to anyone that did experience it, I could see them like rolling their eyes or just being kind of like, oh, you you don't need to see that. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I, I could see that, but I do love a good sky ride. I think there's too few out there. Too many have, have gone away and of all the ones that I never got to ride, I don't know that I would add it to a list like this, but this one sprung to mind. Well, it's like, I mean, I, I did the Magic Kingdom one. I, you know, I know it's a different park, and it didn't go through Matterhorn, and, you know, that was that was fine. I mean, I, it works a little better there because that park's a little big. Not a little big. It's a bunch bigger. Uh, did, you do, did you do that one? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to group two things together. How about the two Bush Gardens parks that closed down? Oh, okay. There was one in Van Nuys, California, and there was one in Houston, Texas. I'm not entirely sure what there was to do in those parks, but I'm damn curious to see what they were like. Because the the Houston one had an Asian theme, and the, the Van Nuys one had a South American theme. And it's just so interesting that... And we've talked about this before. There, you know, Bush's grand plan of uh, having these four parks, uh, where you have you know the, the one in Tampa Bay, Florida, that was uh, had an had an African theme, and then you had the uh, Williamsburg, Virginia one that had a European theme. And it's it's a shame that half their half their parks didn't make it. <laughs> and the Houston one was only open a few years. That was very short lived. Yeah, seventy one to seventy three. California was started in the 60s and closed in the early 70s. No, it actually made it to 79. Okay. 64 to 79 in Van Nuys. We were actually there. We were on the site. Yep. We actually saw, like, the last little thing that's left. It was a little it bridge. Was like a bridge. Yeah, pedestrian bridge. That one of the, I think the only thing left, yeah. I think they each had, like, a little boat ride, but I'm not sure what else beyond that. Well, I know in Van Nuys they had a log flume. And I'm trying to find it because I believe that did go somewhere. And I used to know. I know they had the suspended monorail that, like, went into the brewery. That looks cool when you see it in pictures. And then, yeah, the the Houston one, I, was there any rides? Did they even get that far? I, I think there was one little boat ride. But other than that, I'm not sure. Because there aren't even, like, a lot of pictures that I can find online of it. Yeah, it's really, really crazy that uh, those other parks existed and... But they never really got off the ground, though. So, yeah, these two are actually kind of high on my list. If, if, you know, not that we're ranking these or anything. But I am I would love to have seen these two places. Uh, yeah. I don't know if that would equate to us loving these. I, no, I'm not saying I, that. I, I do hear you that it would be interesting. Even just to uh, sample the food. Oh, sure. Yeah. And because of that, uh, there was actually never a time when all four operated. Oh, that, that's interesting and a shame. Okay. So, I have one more. Uh, it is the Alpine Sleigh Ride. Do you know what this is? Well, that, that was where? I'm sorry? It was at Astro World. Uh, yes. Actually, going back to that park again, I think I kind of said we were done with it, but I lied. We're going back. I do remember reading about this. This is fascinating, and especially for an Arrow fan like me. It was a dark ride. They came up with a name for the system, although I think this was the only time they ever built one. They called called it the Arrow Glide. Uh, it took riders through an alpine-themed forest uh, and then through a, a large mountain structure. It said the ride had elements of both a dark ride and a roller coaster. Uh, I don't know how coastery it really got, but... I would definitely love to try this. There's not a whole hell of a lot of footage out there. There is some. It's not completely lost to time. Uh, it's just, but it's an oddball ride at what really ended up being kind of an oddball park. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Kind of odd, an odd one out that, you know, Six Flags gave up on early and got rid of it, had it torn down. 
And of course, this ride closed long before the park was even closed. So it wasn't even a matter of that this ride disappeared with the park. It was already gone by, I think, a number of years, um, which is uh, too bad. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing here 1983, closed due to high maintenance costs. Later, the mountain and there were some of the caves were used for the Batman the Escape queue. Yeah, and that park had like a like a bat cave walkthrough also. Like separate from any ride? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I wonder if it was part of this structure. It I, I think it was. Been. Okay. So they kind of use this uh, as Batman theme later later on. You went through a forest, to past a waterfall, dark tunnels, icy caverns. They made a couple caverns cold with giant fans of some sort. An echo tunnel, avalanche room, simulated snow. This thing had a lot. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, even an abominable snowman character. Nah. It almost sounds like it was like a tamer Matterhorn, a purposely tamer Matterhorn, where they wanted it to be a little bit more of a dark ride, which is a few coaster elements. Yeah, that does sound like a, a weird, interesting one. Yep, I'd definitely love to try that out. The last one I have on here is, I guess I'm cheating a little bit. I'm going to say the 1964-65 World's Fair. The whole thing? The whole thing. Uh, because it's just so famous and legendary. And, like, you know, we're from New York, so our parents went to it and other people we know went to it. And, and I've only heard nothing but, oh, it was, it was amazing. It was the best time ever. Uh, so I, I, I really would have loved to have uh, experienced that. Yeah, I could, uh, I could be on board with that. You know, I'm not uh, saying just the, the Disney stuff because you, know, you can still do Carousel of Progress and Small World and great moments with Mr. Lincoln when Disney does run it. But Four Magic Skyway is long gone. It would have been cool to see that. But but also just it would have been cool to see the whole fair. Well, yeah, for sure. Now, having been there in my lifetime and just kind of walked those grounds and, you know, now there's not a whole hell of a lot there. And just to think that this was essentially a quickly built Epcot <laughs> you know, on the land at one time. It only lasted for two years, but it is kind of mind blowing. It's hard to wrap your head around. Again, if you walk on that land today. Oh, it's crazy because it's a monster piece of land. It's gigantic yeah. beyond belief how much space that whole thing took up. I mean, overall, probably larger than Epcot. And it was at least that big to, to give you an idea of scale. It was at least that big. I think maybe even a little bit larger if you include like the we had to cross the Grand Central Parkway to get to like where the amusement ride section was. Right, it like spilled over into another section <laughs> across the, the freeway. It was ridiculous. Well, the highway or the parkway. Whatever this it is. is. This is New York now. It's New York now. We don't have freeways over here. So I, I, it would have been, been, uh, been cool. Yeah, I really do wish that could be experienced somehow. Now, I, I didn't go any full parks on, on my list, but uh, this is, I guess, a fair even, but sure. As far as it's, it's amusement park history, though, uh, if only for the fact that Disney got involved so heavily, it really uh, shaped a lot of Disney in the years after that. It's yeah. fun. The, fa the fact that we actually did ride a bunch of rides from it, though, is kind of fun. That's really awesome. I mean, even the Sky Ride, you can ride it at Great Adventure. And they still actually, I wouldn't say celebrate is the wrong word. Uh, they don't celebrate that fact, but they mention that fact if you look at the plaque. It's kind of a, an understated plaque, but it's next to the the, <laughs> the fantasy forest side. Yeah, we, yeah it's not, not just the Disney rides. We've also been able to do that. The antique cars, the actual cars were the ones that were at Adventureland in Farmingdale. And you must have ridden those, right? Oh, definitely. Back, yeah. Back in the day, they actually had the gas powered cars there. Those are World's Fair uh, cars. Uh, the carousel is still there, actually, on that land. They may have moved it, it's not in the same location it was during the fair, but it's still on that piece of property and as, as a one-off ride that you could like pay a couple bucks and ride it. And then I don't think we ever did it, but I think the log flume, I think was maybe ended up going to Dollywood. Like the one they tore out for Daredevil Falls? Right, before Daredevil Falls, they had a smaller flume in that miscellaneous ride section that they have still. Uh, and it was actually a dual flume at the World's Fair. And I think the second one also went, so that might have went to that pirate world that existed in Florida for a short time. Oh, that thing. Okay. Uh, something like that. But uh, yeah, it's the World's Fair rides. A bunch of them did live on. All right. That was your last one? Yep. That's my last one for this list. Well, actually, that kind of reminded me of something. And now that... Can I have a bonus one? 
Yeah, go for it. You thought I was done, but uh, how can I forget about Steeplechase? And actually, it came to mind because not, I, it was originally at, in Steeplechase Park, uh, part of Coney Island. However, I know it moved and operated for a few years in that Pirate World Park that I just mentioned. Oh, really? And But again, still not in, in, in our lifetime. Yeah. Oh, wow. I never knew that. 67 to 73 is when it operated in uh, Pirate's World, Florida. I would like to ride that. It's just, it's historic, and I would kind of like to see what that was all about. Yeah, because that's, whew, it's like 1908. That's that's an old one. Yeah, that's just, they just put people on carousel horses with, like, no restraints and just threw them out on a, on a, on a small roller coaster track. Yeah. And, like, whatever happened, happened. <laughs> right. I know a version of that ride type did exist at Knott's Berry Farm. Can, I, is it possible? Can you still ride it at Blackpool, Pleasure Beach? Yeah. You can. I'd like to try to get there one of these days and uh, and and do that. You know, before our time travel experiment, I mean, I'd like to do it in the original location in Coney Island. And actually, we, we both know at least one person that wrote it. Yes, we do. Like, the stories are a little sketchy that we get, but... <laughs> he was very young, and, you know, I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure it's exaggerated in his mind how high off the right, ground right. it was and how fast it yeah. went and all that. Yeah, yeah, that, that, those parts. And just how, like, dangerous it was. Yeah. Although I can believe that I mean, more than the height and the speed. Yeah, yeah, no, it does look dangerous. I'll definitely give you that. And it had that whole horse racing thing. You actually raced. It was multiple tracks, multiple lanes. Um, okay, that's, uh, that's that is a good mention. So, so that's a bonus one. I just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs>